Welcome to part two of the advanced improvisation demonstration um, about the simple theme. And uh, today I want to move a little bit more into romanticism. Last time it was very strict uh, Baroque classical structures, eight bar structures, four bar structures. We want to now advance the arch a little bit. But um, just before I get to that, I want to show one more small little technique that we then also can transport into the more romantic era of, of organ playing. And that is what Bach often does in his preludes, sometimes in his fugues, is to make a grand pause before the variation comes. The advantage is that when you fill in a counterpoint, the attention of the listener actually goes to what the other voice does when you have this grand pause. Let me demonstrate. So our simple theme was simply and then I had suggested, well, you can expand the theme by simply going from one to four. If you want to be very technical, this is one. Then it is one, six, four. Sorry, four, four, six, four. And, uh, um, but you can make a pause in between and that gives you that effect of, of transferring attention. Also note how the music carries on in spite of the silence, at least the eternal rhythm. how the attention gets all of a sudden drawn onto the noodling of the left hand here when I make this pause. And now with the running counterpoint. So now with that being said, we have done uh, a mirror image, we've done a reversal of the theme, uh, we have done all kinds of, of augmentations, diminutions and so on. And we're now going to use some of those tools and move into the more romantic era. Um, for example, if you want to noodle a little bit um, with an accompaniment a la Vidor, like his fifth organ symphony, or like Boelmann, would be something like this. For example, I'm in G minor. Um, in romantic, more romantic chords, you often have either uh, diminished sevens, but they don't sound like them. So um, that would be an uh, interesting chord. Uh, you have ninth chords, like this, or like this. And you have generally slower moving harmony, but, but in wider ranges with, with more augmented intervals in between uh, the notes. 
Um, so while, while you would be more dense in Baroque, <clears throat> You have these larger uh, chords like a dominant ninth, like moving up, like this. The whole, all the rules of what constitutes a resolution are, are far more loose than they would be in Baroque or classical era. So you can set up yourself a nice little pattern based on uh, uh, seventh and dominant ninth chords. Um, and so while you noodle, important is that you once in a while give a little bit of variation in the left hand as you noodle and in the right hand Don't just plunk down the left hand with a chord, but do something with it. And also something I noticed um, that is that is rather important. Be aware of what your top line does as you noodle, because the human ear, of course, is always drawn to the highest note. The mo second most important is the lowest note, and the rest, the average listener doesn't even hear, they just hear a certain texture or carpet um, that you lay with it. So you have to be aware, for example, you can make little interval jumps with, with your fifth finger up here and give some great interest to this pattern. So that being said, we're going to now combine more romantic chords, a little bit of noodling, and we might as well throw it into minor, that that's, uh, sounds a bit more romantic. Uh, it's, it's less defined a minor chord than a major chord is. A minor chord is more stretchable into other harmonies and so on. Um, so that's why you have more often some, some minor keys in, in the romantic literature. Um, and I'm gonna put, let's say we go into G minor with our noodling because that's where we have been right now. And then in the pedal, I'm gonna use that break again of the theme. <laughs> The ear has also a chance to again have its, its attention drawn to the noodling up here rather than just the theme. So we'll set up the, the, um, uh, the pattern.
so let's say if that would be the intro of, of that theme in a more romantic fashion, we can then switch to something softer <clears throat> and play around with it in, in more softish tones. Um, let's see. play far more with, with color, so we can provide a beautiful shimmering background. A little bit of the theme there. have noticed I set up a nice dialogue between the pedal and the solo voice. I will make the pedal a little bit louder so you can notice that.
dialogue between the fifth finger here on the right hand and pedal. Now we jump right into a furious sort of continuation of this with patterns. Yeah, some of my, my cadences didn't quite work, but it's called improvisation. So in that vein, what you hear is what you get. Um, <clears throat> there is now also one other technique that I wanted to show you that can be used um, in either Baroque or Classicism. They would be called hemiolas then, or in more modern organ composition, um, that would be called cross-patterning. Um, I'll show you a neat little example of that. Um, if I have a five pattern, the ear always hears the one as slightly accentuated, and you can do that on the organ by just holding it a microsecond longer. So, simple five pattern. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And now notice what happens when I only count till four, but keep this pattern up just as it is when I switch counting to four. Here we go. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two,
all of a sudden everything changes, the, all, all of the accents change and you can make some beautiful subtle changes to, to a pattern um, just by simply playing a counterpoint melody that is, that is in four, counted in four while the pattern goes in five, for example. It's a wonderful way of noodling while sounding always ever fresh because nothing ever quite matches up. If you now take the same pattern and uh, a five pattern, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and, and now you impose a four count on it, one, two, three, four, 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 one. wonderful music and that you can now also of course um, do with with more um, large-scale kind of sounds um, this kind of thing so for example the pattern is um, Um, so one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three whoops one two three, four, five six one two three four five six one two three four five six a six pattern and now we put um, a four uh, counting onto this. Mm. Again, these instant shifts, shiftings that the the listener can't really figure out. So, so let's do this on an even larger scale. Um, And uh, let's work our theme into this.
it's amazing. You might have heard that in the first I went along with the system and then the pedals all of a sudden changed every three notes instead of every four notes and everything started shifting. It wasn't really a triplet, it was just a different way of counting. It's, it's amazing material. Anyway, um, I will later on make a big romantic improvisation about this, but I have to change the camera again. Until then. <laughs>